about how to handle these, these crazy objections before they come up. Okay? And by the way, it doesn't matter what objection they give you, I'm going to teach you what's called the objection cycle. Okay? And this is a very powerful, a very powerful tool that will um, that you can use in anything. It, it works with any objections, not just Cutco objections. Any objections. You can get out of, uh, I, our reps get out of, uh, like a lot of our managers have to uh, get out of finals. Okay? We, have, we have branch managers who are running, who are taking classes, and they have to go to finals. This works with professors, this works with boyfriends and girlfriends, it works with parents, it works with uh, police officers. I've got a many tickets using this one I'm going to teach right now. It's awesome. Okay? It works with almost everything. All right? So, um, so it's what's called the objection. The only one, the only person that won't work on is me, because I know what you're doing, because I taught it to you. Okay, and I can do it better than you. All right, so the objection cycle. So the first step of any of handling an objection, okay, uh, is to first is number one is to clarify the objection. Clarify the objection. See, a lot of times a customer says something to you, and if you answer the wrong question, they get mad. Okay, if I said, um, Dola, where'd you get that bracelet? And she was like, Oh, I'm 20 years old. Now that's the right answer. Okay. Uh, where did you get the bracelet? Oh, I'm 18 years old. Okay, that's that's nice to know, Dilma. But where did you get the bracelet? Oh, uh, uh, my bag is pink. Um, what's wrong with you, Dilma? <laughs> okay, I'm asking you a question, and you keep giving me different answers. Okay. Well, this is what happens sometimes with reps. Okay. Like the customer says, like the customer says, I want to think about it, and they go, We have payment plans. Well, that's not the answer to I want to think about it. Okay. That has nothing to do with it. I got to ask my husband. Well, we have smaller sets. What the heck does that have to do with anything? Okay, so, wow, I think it's too expensive. This is way too expensive, okay? Well, if I don't think the homemaker's worth nine forty five, why should I think a, a parent is worth $45? That doesn't make sense, right? But so, so if they say too expensive and you show them smaller sets, that doesn't help, that, that doesn't answer their question, okay? So you're answering the wrong question, all you do is frustrate the customer and they get mad at you. And they're like, what the heck? I don't want to listen to you anymore because I'm telling you something and you're not listening to me, all right? So, wouldn't that frustrate you? Okay, so, so the point is, number one, you have to clarify the objection. What exactly is the customer saying? Okay, let me teach you how to clarify objections, all right? It's really simple, three sentences. Okay? So I go, so no matter what the customer says, anything that they say, whatever they say to the homemaker and they're not buying it, I go, I go, Mr. Jones, I pause, I'm not going to put that in there, but pause for a second, okay? And I say, Mr. Jones, so just so I'm clear on what you're saying, so you write it down. Just so I'm clear. Just so I'm clear on what you're saying, okay? You like the knives. You want to buy them. But, and I repeat whatever they just said. Okay, so this is step one of the objections. I can clarify the objection. You have to clarify what you're answering before you answer. So, Mrs. Jones, okay, so, uh, I don't know, give me an objection. It's too expensive. Okay, so, all right, well, so, Karina, so, just so I understand what you're saying, and I'm clear, um, you're saying you like the knives, and you want to buy them, but you just don't feel they're worth 945, is that correct? Yeah. You know, so now, what do I do by, by doing that? Make a good Yeah, well, there's a couple things going on there, okay? Number one is I'm making them remember, hey, you like the products, remember? Right? Don't all your customers like it? Yeah. Whether or not they buy it, they always like it, right? So, so the point is, number one, you're reminding them that they do like it. Exactly. The second thing I'm doing is, ah, I'm softening them up. Why am I softening them up? Because I'm doing what? Sort of, on the right path. I'm listening to them. I'm listening to them, okay? Like, I'm hearing what they're saying. See, so, anyone ever have a, a discussion with someone or an argument, okay? And you're talking and they're talking, and both of you are making sense, but nobody is listening, so it doesn't matter, okay? And you're like, so uh, where were you last night? What do you mean? Where was I? Who were you? Okay, well, I'm your boyfriend. Yeah, and what does that mean? Okay, well, I think I should know where you are. Oh, you want to know where I am all the time? Yeah, I don't know. All the time, I don't think I have the right to know where you are. Well, I don't think you have the right. I should know where you are. You see this? Okay? Don't both of them make sense, okay? But the point is, is that nobody's listening. They're just arguing with each other, okay? You know when arguments end? When Well, yes, okay? And when somebody gives up. Or when somebody starts telling them, you're right. Right? And somebody says, oh, no, okay, you're right. No, I'll tell you exactly where I am all the time. No, look. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. No, now I'm here. Now I'm over here. 
Okay. No. All right. So, all right. So, uh, so the point is that now can you argue with somebody who's telling you you're right? No. You might be mad, but you can't argue anymore. Okay. So that's going to be step two. By the way. Step number two is agree with the customer. But let me go back to step number one before I go to step number two. Okay. So step number one, clarify the objection. So you repeat what they said. So Mrs. Jones, so what you're saying is you like the product. Not, uh, you, you like the product. You like that. You want to get them. Uh, it's just the fact that you don't feel like they're worth 945. Okay. Now the reason why you do this also is you want to make sure you're getting the right objection. Okay. Because too expensive. Sometimes customers say it's too expensive when they mean I can't afford it. They go, oh, it's too expensive for me right now. Okay. And so sometimes when you say that to a customer, you go, so Mrs. Jones. Just so I'm clear on what you're saying, you like the products and you want to get them, you just don't feel that they're worth that much. And they might go, oh, no, 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 they're totally worth it. I just, I just don't have that kind of money. What's that objection, really? That's right, that's more of I can't afford it, not a too expensive. See, the point is you got to smoke out the real objection, okay? Because you don't want to answer the wrong objection. You answer the wrong objection, customers get mad at you, okay? They're not mad, they just turn off. They're like, I'm talking, they're not listening, obviously, so why should I bother giving them any more time, okay? So, so you got to smoke it out. So, Mr. Jones, what you're saying is you like the product, you want to get it. It's just that you, you want to talk to your husband before you spend this kind of money. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, you want to get it. You like it, Mr. Jones. You want to get it. It's just you don't feel like you need all of these knives, you know, right now. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So now, what the, again? That does two things. Number one, it, um, it, it lets them know. Number one, you reminds them that they bought uh, or that they like the product, and number two, it tells them you're listening. Okay? And when they feel that you're listening to them, what will they do in return? Listen, listen to you. Okay? <laughs> and that gets to number two, which is the agreeing. Okay? And the agree, the agreeing part is you let down the guard. Okay? So you agree. Because when customers give you an objection, what do you think they expect from you to do? Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to give you some answers. Okay? Oh, I can't afford it. They expect you to be like, oh, well, we've got payment plans, we've got this and that. And they, they get ready for that, okay? And they put up what's called the objection wall, all right? And uh, they get ready to fight, all right? So, so they're like, oh, you know what? I really like the go, but I can't afford it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, and they get ready, right? And you're like, yeah, but we got these, you know, we got payment plans. You throw something, you a little punch up there, right? And they're like, <laughs> boom, okay, I can't afford it, right? And how many of you guys were saying stuff, but the customer just wasn't, like, you would like, uh, so, well, we got payment plans, and no, no, I can't afford it. Yeah, but we got smaller sets. No, no, I can't, I can't afford it. Yeah, but we got, you know, you can get pieces. No, I can't, I can't afford it. You know, but I'll give it to you for free. No, I can't afford I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford it. They're like, what are you talking about, right? Like, they just weren't listening to what you were saying, okay? Even though you were saying the right things, but they weren't listening. The reason why is you didn't do this part, and you didn't do this part, okay? Because this is the most important part. So, the first thing you do is you agree with the customer, okay? Well, the first thing you do is you clarify the objection, make sure you're doing the right thing. Second thing you do is agree, okay? So, let's go back to Karina. She said it's too expensive. So, I said, uh, so I said, Karina, what are you saying? You like the products, you want to get them, it's just right now. Or, excuse me, uh, you like the products, you want to get them, but you just don't feel they're worth that much at, at this time. Okay? Yeah. Well, Karina, I completely understand. And actually, uh, I don't, uh, you know, they are really expensive products. I, I don't sell cheap products. Okay? And I've agreed with her. They are expensive. Okay? That's fine. All right? Now, now I'm ready to fight. So, i got to ask my husband. Mr. Jones, I completely understand. You matter of fact, I would recommend you ask your husband. <laughs> okay? Like, they're ready to fight, and I'm agreeing, okay? I can't afford it. Mrs. Jones, you know what? They are a lot of money. Most people can't afford it right off the bat. Okay? So they just stop, okay? And, and what happens is that what helps them lower the wall, okay? So the first thing you do, clarify. The second thing you do is agree. And I do it for all the objections, okay? I really can't afford it. Mrs. Jones, I completely understand it is a lot of money for knives, and I completely understand it. Okay, uh, it's too expensive. Ms. Jones, you're right. <laughs> the products are very expensive. Okay. No sales rep says that. Okay, they are. It is very expensive. Okay, uh, you know, I, I want to think about it. Ms. Jones, completely understand. You, you probably don't want to make a big decision, you know, right on the spot here. Today. Is that correct? I would, I would understand that. I would do the same thing. Right? Okay, uh, you know, what is the other one? Oh, my eyes are, uh, you know, I don't know if I need all those knives. Can I just get this one or that one? Mr.